All is not okay in Oklahoma. The Hidalic Murders in Brian Laundry 2.0. When I think of Oklahoma, I think of prairie lands, oil boom, rodeos, cowboys, Indians, kind of like the wild, wild west of the east, yeah, the tornadoes. For some reason, I think of that song, Home on the Range. But anyways, I think of all of those things, right? Well, I saw that Oklahoma was the fifth unhappiest state in the United States. And whether it be because it's a depressing state, um, substance abuse, alcoholism, a lot of death or mourning from that C word, whatever it is, it seriously cannot be that bad for someone to dismember four people's bodies. Four grown men, four grown men in their prime. How does one do that? You'd have to be like very skilled, wouldn't you say? Well, this happened to be the fate for four Oklahoma men, two of them brothers actually. Let's see, we have Mark Chastain, Billy Chastain, Alex Stevens, and Mike, Mike Sparks. Okmulgee, Oklahoma is a nice small town. It is now a commercial and industrial center for oil and gas production and agriculture. Imagine going on a bike ride one late October's Eve with three of your friends, and you'll never have to ride that bike again because you're getting ready to hit a lick that was so big that you guys would be set. But you never come home that night and all is not what it seems. On a Sunday night more than a week ago, these four men headed out from a home in Okmulgee, Oklahoma on a bike ride, but their families would never see them alive again. Five days later, police say parts of their bodies started emerging from this river south of Tulsa. Each victim suffered gunshot wounds. All four bodies were dismembered before being placed in the river, and that is what caused difficulty in determining identity. Authorities say the victims are Alex Stevens, Mike Sparks, and brothers Billy and Mark Chastain. John Chastain is an uncle of the two brothers. He says the men were good fathers who leave six children behind. We're all horribly, horribly hurt over them. I mean, it's just, it's just not something that uh, we ever seen coming. Our family never seen them doing anything to deserve this. But how and why these men were killed remains a mystery. Investigators say the men's cell phones were last tracked in two salvage yards on the edge of town. Near one of those yards, investigators say they found evidence of a, quote, violent event. Investigators say they interviewed the owner of the salvage yards last Friday. The man denied knowing the four victims, but then he disappeared. Until Tuesday, when he was arrested in Florida for driving a stolen pickup truck with Oklahoma license plates. Joe Kennedy is considered a person of interest, but no charges have been filed. Investigators would like to speak with him again. Investigators also say they have evidence the four victims were plotting to commit some kind of crime. That belief is based on information supplied by a witness who reports they were invited to go with the men to quote unquote, hit a lick big enough for all of them. We do not know what they planned or where they planned to do it. Police there in Oklahoma have said that they believe these four men were planning some sort of crime. When you heard them say that, what'd you think? The boys, they were hard workers. They were hard workers. The whole family's devastated, you know? Whether they, whatever they were doing, whatever, I mean, whatever it was, they weren't going out to uh, murder people. Whatever was going on, I don't know. But what I do know is we need some justice for this. And Anderson, it's important to point out that this person of interest, Joe Kennedy, investigators say he was cooperative during their meeting with him on Friday. It's important to point out that there's been no indication so far that he's considered a suspect in this case. But that relative of one of the victims that you heard from there say the family is simply distraught over the gruesome nature of these murders. In his words, he described uh, the murders as, quote, medieval. The worst part is that these people had families. And these four young men were probably the providers. And to come to an end in such a shocking way, I can't even imagine the 
horror and the pain that their families are feeling, especially the ones with kids. A person means something different to everyone. Somebody lost a son. Somebody lost a brother. Somebody lost their favorite cousin. Somebody lost their uncle. Somebody lost their husband. You know, somebody lost their best friend. Actually, I, I think these four were all best friends. They were very close from what I hear. But when you take someone's life, you're taking people's worlds from them. We're gonna keep on this case. It had to have been either somebody supremely skilled or multiple people who did this. Now, there was gunshots involved. So they probably were shot and then dismembered. I don't like saying that, but it's just the fact of the matter. They were dismembered, they were chopped up. And it's so crazy because the police even seemed terrified by this. They couldn't even, it took them a long time to figure out who these people were. But they, luckily they did get um, Joe Kennedy. He's not a suspect, but he's a person of interest. Actually, I'm um, gonna talk a little bit about him and then we're gonna move on to Brian Laundry 2.0. Um, but Joe Kennedy, he is now in custody. And I'm not sure, I, I believe he had, he did, no, he did, he had a warrant for um, a homicide. Okay, update. Joe is definitely in custody and I don't see him getting out anytime soon. But the question still remains, does he have anything to do with the crimes of dismembering these four men? I mean, he's 70 years old, but who knows, he could have had help. But he was arrested in Florida. Um, he actually had a warrant for a crime committed in 2012. Six people broke into a salvage yard and he ended up protecting himself. And it says that the gentleman's, one of the gentlemen's on the bike, their, one of their phones last pinged at one of his salvage yards. That's why he's interconnected to all of this. Um, and one of his salvage yards was actually the site of the shooting nearly 10 years ago. And um, he was actually serving a 10 year deferred sentence. And what happened is he ended up getting in trouble. He would have been free, scot free in May, but this little slip up really cost him dearly. And he even has the um, Grand Theft Auto charge as well. So the judge denied him bond. He feels like he needs to be in place, especially after he threatened to commit in front of the officers when they went to arrest him at his Florida hotel. So the Oklahoma police know where to find him. Once a murder investigation is happening, the police are tight-lipped, more tight-lipped than whenever a missing person's case is going on. So we're not gonna get a lot of answers right now. But hopefully there's a press conference, another press conference soon. And when there is, I will update you all, okay? Brian Laundry 2.0. The second story I wanted to tell you is about a teenage couple. We've all been there, young and in love. And we do dumb things. Sometimes we do anything just to be with our loved one. Well, this is what happened with Madison Riff and her boyfriend, not once not twice, but three times. But on this third time, she was gone longer than usual. And then her boyfriend came back, but not with Madison. And it's very concerning because the first time Madison was gone, she was only gone 24 hours. The second time, it was five days. This time, two months. Now that's a long time. And that's very, very concerning. There's been Facebook messages that have been popping up from Madison on a new account with only one picture. That's no good. And that, that's not gonna calm her parents' souls. Her parents are worried sick. I mean, she just turned 17. The girl is a baby and she's out there on her own. 
this world is not easy for a little girl who's been sheltered all her life. It's not it's not going to be easy for her to navigate. She's going to need money. She's going to need clothes. She didn't even have her phone. So, this is Madison. And this one happened in Oklahoma City. So, not very far from Oak Mobile. People are aware. But what concerns me the most is that somebody is using this Facebook profile, whether it's her or they're pretending to be her. Okay, now if the police were very concerned, what they could do is track down the IP address that's attached to that Facebook profile and ping her phone or the laptop, whatever device the person's using for that Facebook account and find her location. And I know this because that's exactly what happened in the Gypsy Rose Lantern case after they killed her mother and they were concerned that nobody had found her body. So Gypsy Rose and her boyfriend went on Facebook acting like some crazy man and um, put something in on Gypsy's uh, joint account with her mother saying that uh, this bee is dead. I raped her like a pig and she squealed. Just all kinds of stuff. I'm probably going to have to bleep that out. <laughs> but um, just kind of just being very nasty, saying mean and vicious things, and it alerted people, and um, the cops or FBI, they ended up pinging their little device they used, and they got them. They got, they got them. If it's that, if it could be that easy, why, why won't they, why won't they do that? They won't do that because she's, she has a prior past of running away, and it shouldn't be like that at all because this is a little girl. This is a minor. I'm not sure what's going on with the legal system right now, but things are getting really backwards. I mean, just ask Leilani Simon. She just killed her little boy and is walking, allegedly, allegedly, and she's walking around free and drinking and partying at bars while the cops are searching a landfill for her son. Wow, how backwards is that? Don't you guys think she should be behind bars by now? Anyways, that's a totally different story for another day. And um, on that note, I'd like you to make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, introduce yourself. Let me know what you think of these two cases. And with that being said, I'll be back soon. Very, very soon. I want to include more, but I want to limit this to just Oklahoma, because all is not okay in Oklahoma, apparently. And I'm, I'm going to try and pump these out for you, baby, okay? I'm going to try and get all this information to you as fast as I can, because this right here is what I want to do. I want to do YouTube, baby. Ciao for now. Bye.